Hi, I'm Sam. If you have used the 2018 to 2022 American Community Survey five-year public use microdata sample or PUMS file in our microdata access tool, you may have noticed that the public use microdata areas or PUMAs are not found among the list of geographies as they have been in other recent years. Don't worry though, because you can still gather data for the PUMAs. In this tutorial, I'll help you understand why this change temporarily occurred and let you know about some things to keep in mind before using PUMAs from the 2022 ACS five-year PUMS in our microdata access tool. First, let's talk a little about PUMAs and what's going on with them. PUMAs are non-overlapping statistical geographic areas that partition each state or equivalent entity into geographic areas containing no fewer than 100,000 people each. They cover the entirety of the U.S. and Puerto Rico. Like many other types of census geographies, PUMA boundaries can potentially change every 10 years with each decennial census. However, these changes are not necessarily implemented right away in the American Community Survey, or ACS. Rather, depending on the geography, they are implemented on a staggered schedule, with some geography changes incorporated into the data sooner than others. PUMAs from the 2020 census were incorporated in the release of the 2022 ACS data. One of the main times that this transition between 2010 and 2020 PUMA boundaries can really start to become tricky is when you are working with the ACS five-year PUMS data. As I mentioned earlier, if you have already gone into our microdata access tool, also known as MDAT, and looked at the 2022 ACS five-year PUMS, you may have noticed that PUMAs are not listed with the other geographies. This is because PUMAs are actually treated as variables that can be found under the Variables tab. This different way of selecting them is in place for the 2022 ACS five-year PUMS and a few other historical ACS PUMS datasets. Changes were made to the 2023 ACS five-year PUMS file that eliminated the need for the PUMAs to be treated as variables. So if you're using that or a future release of the five-year PUMS files, you can select your PUMAs in the same area that you would select other types of geographies. Even though this different way of selecting PUMAs doesn't apply to any PUMS released after the 2022 five-year PUMS, I think it's still a good idea to understand why this different way of selecting the PUMAs was needed in the first place. It's because the 2022 ACS five-year PUMS uses dual vintages. This means that some years of data that make up the 2022 ACS five-year PUMS are using PUMAs with boundaries from the 2010 census, while others are using boundaries from the 2020 census. The thing to keep in mind is that the 2022 ACS five-year PUMS are comprised of data running from 2018 through 2022. I think it helps to understand dual vintages better when it's laid out like this, showing which years use which boundaries. As we can see, data from 2018 through 2021 all use the 2010 Puma boundaries, while 2022 uses the 2020 Puma boundaries. To expand on this a little, let's look at the 2023 ACS five-year PUMS, which encompasses data running from 2019 through 2023. For this set of five-year data, 2019, 2020, and 2021 use the 2010 PUMA boundaries, while 2022 and 2023 use the 2020 PUMA boundaries. A new year with 2020 PUMA boundaries will get added and an old year with 2010 PUMA boundaries will get dropped with each successive release of five-year PUMS data. This will continue until the release of the 2026 ACS five-year PUMS data, which will use all 2020 PUMA boundaries. So you may be wondering why if the 2023 through 2025 five-year PUMS are still technically dual vintage, the PUMAs aren't being treated as variables. 
The reason is that for these data sets, we have already crosswalked the Pumas in the microdata records using a 2010 to 2020 Puma relationship file, so you don't have to worry about trying to match up the Pumas on your end. Again though, this isn't applicable to the 2022 ACS five-year PUMs. So if you use that, you will still need to select your Pumas from the list of variables. There are also some other things you'll need to do differently, which we cover in the accompanying tutorial found at the link below. To help you in learning this process for the 2022 five-year PUMs, let's walk through part of it using an example. Let's say that I want to find detailed data on the language spoken at home for the Butler County Puma in Pennsylvania. Before I go into MDAT to create a table, there are a couple things I should check on. First, I need to determine the geo ID for the Puma I need for both the 2010 and 2020 boundaries, as there is no guarantee that it's the same for both. I also want to make sure that the boundaries themselves haven't changed, which would impact the area that it covers. There are a variety of census documents and tools that you can use to determine this. My first stop is with the Puma name documents found at the links below. I can see that the GOID for the Butler County Puma did not change between the 2010 and 2020 censuses. It's 01600 in both cases. Then I checked in data.census.gov to take a look at the area that the Puma covers. It doesn't look like there was any change with the area covered either. It's not always this easy though. In just the Pumas found in the list above the one for Butler County, we can see that there were changes. Between 2010 and 2020, the Beaver County South Puma's name did not change, but the GOID for it did. In 2010, it was Puma 01502. In 2020, it changed to Puma 01512. The same is true for the Lawrence and Beaver North County's Newcastle City Puma. The name itself did not change, but the GOID did. It changed from being Puma 01501 in 2010 to being Puma 01511 in 2020. Another more general piece of information to know about Puma codes is that they are not unique across states. So in addition to specifying the specific GOID of the Puma, you'll also need to specify the state that you want it for. We go over how to specify this when you are working in MDAT in our accompanying tutorial found at the link below. We can use the Butler County, Pennsylvania Puma again as an example. The GOID for that is 01600. Using the 2020 census boundaries, there are 20 Pumas across different states that also have a GOID of 01600, including New Jersey, Tennessee, Alabama, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Iowa, and Louisiana. So to help make sure that you are getting data for the right one, you'll want to make sure that you specify the state. Now, if all of this is not enough to keep you on your toes, there's also one other thing to be aware of. While overall, it's not a frequent occurrence, if these Puma GOIDs change like they did for the Beaver County South Puma, they aren't always just discarded. Rather, they can get recycled and be reassigned to a completely different Puma. Again, this isn't a frequent occurrence, but it is something to keep an eye out for. An example of this can be found in New York, most notably for Pumas in New York City. Let's look at the Puma in New York that had the GOID of 04110 using the 2010 boundaries. For that, the name was NYC Queens Community District 5, Ridgewood, Glendale, and Middle Village. You can see the area in the map that it covers. If we zoom out more, we can really get a feel for where it's at in relation to the surrounding area. Now, if we take that same Puma GOID 04110 and look at it when the 2020 boundaries are being used, we can see that it's not only a completely different name, but also in a completely different area. 
The name is now NYC Manhattan Community District 10 Harlem. And then if we zoom out more, we get a better feel for where it's at in relation to the surrounding area. When we look at them side by side, we can really see just how far apart the two Pumas are geographically. They are completely different, but the GOID was still 04110 in both cases. I hope this makes it a little clearer as to why it's so important to confirm that you are actually using the Pumas that you intend to use whenever you are working with them in this way. So the next question is, how does one determine what Puma should be used when looking at both the 2010 and 2020 boundaries? Let's stick with trying to find the new GOID using the 2020 boundaries for Puma 04110 that was named NYC Queens Community District 5, Ridgewood, Glendale, and Middle Village using the 2010 boundaries. I usually use the maps in data.census.gov to determine the information about the Puma. If you want to learn more on using the maps in data.census.gov, please visit our resources page at the link below. Using a map for the 2022 ACS data, I found the area that I'm interested in. Then using the identify functionality in the site, I determined that the name of this Puma using the 2020 boundaries is NYC Queens Community District 5, Ridgewood, Masspeth, and Middle Village. The GOID for this is 04405. The 36 shown at the front of the full GOID is the state FIPS code for New York. So if this was the Puma that I needed to get data for from the 2022 ACS five-year PUMS, I would actually need to use these two Pumas. Puma 04110, NYC Queens Community District 5, Ridgewood, Glendale, and Middle Village for the years with the 2010 boundaries, and Puma 04405, NYC Queens Community District 5, Ridgewood, Masspeth, and Middle Village for the years with the 2020 boundaries. In looking at the areas side by side, I can also see that there was a slight shift in the boundaries, primarily in the northwest corner of the Puma. I'll want to keep this in mind as I find data for it. I hope this tutorial has helped you in understanding what you need to check before going into MDAT to use the 2022 ACS five-year PUMS to get data for Pumas. To learn how to put this information into action in MDAT, please see our accompanying video at the link below. For more guidance on using MDAT, please visit our resources page at the link below. Thank you.